Okay, so since we've been talking about the plant life cycle, I thought we could go ahead and draw all the different parts of the plant. So we could start by drawing a horizon line, which is just a horizontal line that goes across the page. And I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the page so I have plenty of room for my plant to grow. So for this project, what you're gonna need is, um, I think you have some paints in your kits and a pencil and um, a paintbrush and some water. Now, of course, whenever you're gonna do any painting, you're gonna to need to just ask your parents permission to have a little area where you can set up maybe um, near the kitchen table, maybe a desk in your bedroom. Um, these aren't very messy paints, but any paint is messy. So you always need to just ask permission to get set up. You can put water in a recycling container, get a pencil, maybe an eraser. Um, you'll find some of those things in your art kits. Okay, so we're gonna start with our horizon line, which is gonna go just across the bottom of the page. And what we're trying to show is the underneath. We're trying to show this part is gonna be the dirt underneath. And that's where the seed's gonna be with the roots. So I'm just gonna, even though we don't even know what I'm kind of plant I'm gonna make yet, I'm gonna make my seed, and I know the seed is going to have some roots that dig into the ground and provide nutrients and water for the plant. So no matter what plant I'm growing, I know it's gonna have some roots. So we go ahead and draw some roots here. Now some plants, like root vegetables, the roots are part of the, like a carrot would go straight down into the earth or the beets grow here under the ground. I'm not gonna choose those kind of plants today. I'm gonna to choose a plant that grows mostly above the ground. So we've got our seed that has um, sprouted and if it was small, it would be a little baby, what was that word that we called it? A seedling. That's a little baby plant, a seedling. Once it pushes up into the earth. Okay, um, but I think I'm gonna draw a different kind of plant. I think I'm gonna, I could draw um, tomatoes like we saw in the book. I could draw a sunflower like we talked about. Uh, I could draw an apple tree. There's so many different kinds of plants you could draw, but what we really wanna see is the parts of the plant. So the roots, the seeds, the stem, the leaves, and the blossom or the fruit. So um, since we're doing talking about sunflowers and since you saw that how much I love them, I'm gonna draw a sunflower, or maybe I'll draw more than one. And I'm gonna make kind of a nice thick stem because they are the largest uh, the largest flower that I know, I'm sure there's larger ones, but so I need, they need a nice thick stem to support them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a big round circle. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You can always come through and do your ghost drawing first. That helps your, your body get used to that motion. And then you go ahead and draw your circle and it doesn't have to be perfect. Some people go around and around until they get the right circle that they like and then they come through and erase the lines that they don't think form as good of a circle. And that's another way that we're just kind of sketching out our design. Okay, and then um, for the petals of the sunflower, um, it, or whatever plant you're um, deciding to draw, you guys can go ahead and draw it, either from your imagination, or maybe you could go out into your yard and look at something growing. Was there a plant that caught your interest this summer? Either because you like to eat it or because you thought it was unique and interesting. Okay, so for these petals, I just went ahead and made a line this way, a line that way, a line this way, a line that way. That's one way to do it. Um, in your packets that I sent home, if you're deciding to do in your sketchbook, if you are doing a sunflower, there's all sorts of ways to do a sunflower. Um, we can different ideas here. Um, there's this how to draw worksheet, but of course you'd have to draw the roots and the seed also. And then inside your sketchbook, you'll also see all these different ways to make a sunflower. So maybe um, you could choose one of these centers. See all the different seeds inside there. Um, so those are all different ways you could do it or make up your own, of course. Um, I kind of like it when they have the circles inside, the circles inside, and sometimes I don't make them um, perfectly concentric. That's a circle inside a circle. Sometimes I make it, try to make it so that they're even looking up towards the sun. Watch what happens when I make 
the circles inside kind of higher up. It almost looks like it's shining towards the sun a little bit. And that's the really interesting thing about sunflowers is they move throughout the day. Um, they go east to west as the sun goes down and then overnight they turn themselves around to face east again so that they're ready in the morning. And these are just different circadian rhythms that we also have. Our bodies tell us when to go to sleep and when to wake up and the sunflowers tell them when to face the sun. Okay, so we've got, let's see if we have all our body, our parts. We've got our seed. Now you can label them if you want to. You don't have to. We've got our roots. We have our stem. And we have our leaves here. And we have our flower up here. And then what was inside here again, boys and girls? What did we see in that video? All the different patterns forming the Fibonacci pattern that we can talk about when you're older. It's a, a math sequential series of numbers that um, you can find in nature. But what was in here? That's right, it was the seeds. So that the flower can go ahead and plant itself for the next coming year. Okay, let's go ahead and paint. 